Poor staffing in long-term care was the gasoline to COVID-19's match, witness testifies at House hearing, and CMS orders resumption of nursing home staffing data collection, update star rating plans. This and more, next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, July 1st, 2020. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Several expert witnesses called for the federal government to address inadequate staffing in nursing homes and long-term care facilities in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic and its fatal toll on residents and staff. Quote, the issues that COVID-19 exploited are not highly technical or complex. They are basic issues of training and adequate staffing, testified Nicole Howell, Executive Director for Ombudsman Services of Contra Costa and Solano Counties. Poor staffing in long-term care facilities was the gasoline to COVID-19's match, end quote. Her testimony came during a hearing held by the House Ways and Means Committee Thursday afternoon. The hearing centered around the impact of the coronavirus crisis on nursing homes. Howell also explained that within the long-term care industry, direct care workers on average earn only $1 to $2 more per hour over state minimum wage, forcing these dedicated people to work 60 to 80 hours per week at multiple locations, meaning you can have a caregiver that works at one facility where there are active COVID-19 infections who are forced to work at a second location and may transmit the virus to residents. David Grabowski, PhD, Harvard professor and healthcare policy expert, also stressed the need for providing more resources such as better wages and more PPE to address staffing shortages. He mentioned that the new federal COVID data suggests that over 500 staff nationally have died from COVID, making nursing home caregiver the most dangerous job right now in America with a higher death rate than logging workers and commercial fishermen. The pandemic's toll on nursing homes is a deadly consequence of inadequate staffing levels and lax infection control practices, according to Toby Edelman, senior policy attorney for the Center for Medicare Advocacy. She added that CMS must establish and enforce stronger oversight measures. CMS announced plans on Thursday to end the emergency waiver and resume requirements for all nursing homes to submit staffing data through the payroll-based journal PBJ system by August 14th. In addition, on July 29th, staffing measures and star ratings will be held constant and be based on data submitted by December 31st, 2019. The systems are used for the consumer-facing Nursing Home Compare website and the five-star quality rating system. Thursday's announcement also means that CMS will remove the automatic one-star staffing rating downgrade that many facilities experienced. Instead, those facilities will have their measures and ratings temporarily suppressed. Facilities may have received an automatic star downgrade to one star due to missing a submission deadline or for having four or more days in a quarter with no registered nurse. Now they will be able to correct and improve their rating in this domain since the rating will be held constant. The blanket waiver was meant to allow regulations to con uh, concentrate efforts on dealing with COVID-19 and lessen administrative burdens on providers. In addition, regulations regulators said they are continuing to monitor events and will restart the inspection ratings as soon as possible. They also said they would inform stakeholders of any sub subsequent change before they are made to Nursing Home Compare. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week. And I'll see you on Wednesday.